video, we're going to be talking about three different types of tests that you can use to prove if two triangles are similar. So they are called the triangle similarity tests. Similar to uh, triangle congruency tests, they're named using letters that correspond to the parts on the triangle. So A represents angle, S represents a side. So the first type of similarity test we can use is called angle-angle. It means that if we have two corresponding angle measures that are equal in two different triangles, then those two triangles must be the same shape, but maybe a different size. So they are similar triangles. Remember that angles create the type of shape. So if triangles have the same angles, then they must be the same type of triangle. That doesn't, however, mean that they are the same size. So that is why this is a similarity test and not a congruency test. If you're given two angles that are the same, well then that must mean that that third angle measure is going to be equal. So you can use some math to prove that. If you add up these two angles that are given, 78 and 57 give us 135. If you subtract that from a total of 180, you can find the angle measure that's missing. So we know that this angle is 45 degrees. And so as you can see over here, if these two angles are the same, well then we must be missing the exact same measurement. So that is why we only need to know two angles. The third angle measure will be the same as long as two angles are the same. Now be careful though, on a quiz or a test you may see something trying to trip you up. What if instead of 78 and 57 we had been given 45 and 78 in this triangle, and then in this triangle we were given 57 and 78. Now you may be looking at those two angles and saying, well, they're not the same, so it's not similar triangles. So be careful, always find that third angle measure because it may be the missing piece to say that they're all the same measures. Another type of similarity test is called side angle side. This is if you have two corresponding sides and an angle in between Let's check their relationship of those parts. The angle in between is going to be congruent. In similar shapes, angles are congruent. But this time, the sides are not going to be congruent. So I know on your note paper, maybe there were congruency marks right there. Take those off, erase those, or scratch them out. They're not supposed to be there. The sides on either side of the angle here need to be in proportion. So they're not going to be congruent, they're going to be proportional. So what you want to do is you want to check their corresponding ratios. So comparing 6 to 12, is that equal to comparing 7 to 14? Well, yeah, those are equal ratios. So the side lengths are in proportion. This triangle is just two times bigger than this triangle. I know it's not drawn to scale. You just have to look at the measurements instead. The last similarity type is called side, 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 and that's if we compare all three corresponding sides. If we can see that corresponding sides are in proportion, then the two triangles must be similar. So for example, if I compare the left sides, two to eight, sorry, two to four, and the tops, four to eight, and the right sides, three to six, all of those are equal ratios so these two triangles are in proportion. This similarity type is a little tricky if your triangles get rotated because finding corresponding parts is a little tricky if you're not told what they are. So maybe sometimes you have to do a little bit of guess and check and play around with a few ratios to see if you can get some equal ratios. Let's do some examples. In these examples, we're going to determine if the triangles are similar, and if they are, we're going to choose which type of similarity. And if they are similar, then we're going to write a similarity statement. If they're not similar, then we're going to provide a reason. So in these two triangles, we can see the vertical angles happening here. So we know we have a congruent angle pair. If sides on either side of that are in proportion, then we would have side angle side. So let's check. If we try and compare 14 to 15 and then see if that ratio is equal to 10 to 21, well, that's not true. 
So let's try one more possibility here. What if we try 14 compared to 21 and 15 compared to 10? Well, then that ratio actually holds up. So as it turns out, this triangle has been rotated. But it's still side angle side. So we could name this left triangle. For example, we could call it angle, or sorry, triangle TBM. Depending on how we name our first triangle in our similarity statement determines how we name the second triangle because we want corresponding parts to line up. So if we rotate this triangle around in our mind so that it lines up, A is going to correspond with T, B is going to correspond with itself, B, and C is going to correspond with M. In the next example, again, we see vertical angles happening. So we know we have at least one pair of angles that are corresponding and congruent. So we know we might have angle angle or side angle side. I don't have any side measurements, so I'm guessing I probably may be trying to prove angle angle, except I'm missing an angle pair. So if you notice that there are arrows on the sides here, those symbolize parallel lines. So I have parallel lines cut by a transversal here. There's two transversals, but we're going to focus on ST because what we can see there is that we have these alternate interior angles, and those are congruent. So now we have two pairs, which means that that third pair is going to automatically be congruent, and we have angle-angle similarity. If we name the first triangle, triangle TPQ, well, then we just have to name the next triangle so the corresponding parts line up. Make sure that T corresponds with S, P corresponds with R, and Q corresponds with itself. All right, one more example here. This time we're given two triangles and all three side lengths for each of them. So I'm assuming that I might want to try and prove side, side, side. But here's an example of where it gets a little tricky because one of the triangles has been rotated a little bit. So I'm not sure how it's been rotated, so i got to play around with my ratios for a little bit. Eventually, though, we should be able to see that 6 compares to 9, and 8 compares to 12, and 10 compares to 15. So if I set those up as ratios, they are equal ratios, so all three sides are in proportion. In doing that, I can also maybe label my corresponding angles, because that's going to make labeling or naming my triangle a little bit easier. And then we can also see that this triangle just got slightly rotated counterclockwise there. And we can name our corresponding parts in our similarity statement. So if I name my first triangle LMN, then I must correspond and name my next triangle with RST. All right, so there's some examples using those three similarity tests. Just be able to recognize them. And if they are similar, be able to complete a similarity statement.